Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to another uh, Full Compass. Uh, looks like our screen is stuck here. Uh, another one of our, uh, the Full Compass Full Access webinar series. Um, there we go. Ah, had to get that last little bit in there. Uh, where, uh, in our series where we uh, uh, pick a uh, industry expert where you have picked the subject or the product, and today, uh, we've had lots of questions about networked wireless systems. So today we brought in uh, Dan Pelletier from Audio Technica uh, to uh, talk us through their networked version of, of uh, wireless systems. And real quick, before we go uh, into the the presentation with Dan here, um, we have uh, a question feature that you're able to use uh, during the presentation. Go ahead and type those in. I will see those and then present those to Dan. Uh, uh, near, near at the end, or if they're super important, we'll go right in the middle of it. Also, recording of this presentation um, will be available for those of you that had to duck out midway or uh, for future use for anybody else. For future viewing, it will be posted on our YouTube channel and go up on LinkedIn as well. Um, also, a short survey, and that survey, this is where you get to choose the subjects you want to see in the future. So I, I read through those and then and I pick out, if I see several people asking about uh, certain things in particular, then I absolutely uh, will, that will be our next subject. So without further ado, let's bring Dan, I'm gonna turn on your camera here and uh, go ahead and unmute your mic and you should be live. I can All right, see you. We'll, do, we'll do it live. Yeah, we'll do it live. <laughs> Uh, welcome, Dan. Good to have you back. You. I know we've had you on several times. This is, uh, uh, sure. you know, you and I got, I guess, are getting to have a very long-term relationship here with uh, <laughs> webinars and trainings and all kinds of stuff. So uh, I'm going to point out again, Dan is an outstanding musician. Uh, I've been watching you on Facebook. Some of the the practice sessions that you do, and I've listened to your CD. is It's pretty Thank wild you. stuff. Uh, <laughs> So you are very well rounded in in audio and all in all aspects uh, in the industry. So I don't know if there's anything else you want to talk about with your accolades at all. But oh, man, I just love talking about myself. It's it's uh... <laughs> no th thanks for that. Um, yeah, I, I, to 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 qualify that that weird wild stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in a metal band, and uh, we you know get I'm. 40 years old, you know, my, my buddies and I, like we get together every Tuesday night to, to practice and we just resumed that. Uh, but we might be going back to uh, some more social distancing again. I guess we'll just have to see if that are masks at practice. I don't know. I'm, gotta, still, that's... I'm still waiting to hear that, that uh, metal version of a Chris, some sort of Christmas song. You know from... what we do? We should do that. Really should. <laughs> so we got to pick All a right. Christmas song. I'm going to hand over the presentership to you, and then uh, again, I will I will duck out with my camera here and and audio, and then uh, I'll pop in if any important questions pop up for you, Dan. All right, sounds good. All yours. Thank you. Can everybody uh, can everybody see my screen? Just want to Let's make sure. Do, do you see Do you see it? Yep. All right. Good. Let's uh, all right. Let, well, let's talk about um, some some wireless from Audio Technica. So the first thing uh, to to throw out there is uh, the 600 megahertz rebate program. I think that the uh, 600 megahertz issue, uh, as it relates to you know wireless microphone use, has been something that's been discussed by pretty much every manufacturer ad nauseum, uh, where the the FCC auctioned off. Uh, the, the 600 megahertz, um, you know, more than a few years back. And uh, because of that, uh, if you are operating any 600 megahertz wireless system, that is going to be uh, illegal to operate on uh, just a couple days here, July 13th. That's, it, it seems to have come up very quickly. But one of the nice things that, you know, we could say it from, from AT is that uh, by the time this is all said and done, our rebate program will have been going on for about three years now, and we have just extended it. Literally yesterday, I've extended it. 
uh, up until September 30th. And basically how that works is um, you buy an Audio-Technica wireless system from Full Compass and uh, you have uh, 30 days to, to claim your rebate. But again, we've extended it now uh, up until the deadline date uh, to um, September 30th. Uh, so you have a couple more months uh, to take advantage of the Audio Technica rebate program. In that, and I did do a brief overview of our wireless systems. We have System 9, which is a four channel VHF system, lower cost system. We have the 2000 series. Now, although we're going to be focusing here on 3000 series, we do have the 5000 series. We have System 10, which is our 2.4 gigahertz system. Just a couple things to throw out about Audio Technica is that uh, we've been supplying the microphones for the Olympics uh, since 1996. Um, and uh, we have also been supplying the microphones for uh, a lot of the microphones for the Grammys and the Country Music Awards for a, a long time now. Um, kind of a fun thing and this is something I, I like to throw out there for the 2018 Winter Olympics. Uh, we had a lot of channels of wireless for the curling event. That was actually the most wireless intensive event. Um, also, if you want to go back on YouTube and look at some of the events, you could see AT shotgun microphones all down the slope, the ski slopes. And uh, there's, you know, lavaliers on the gates for a lot of the ice events. Uh, I like the, the skeleton. That's probably my favorite. Um, but if anybody wants to have a, a guess, if you want to put it in the chat as to how many wireless channels were operated for the curling event, uh, I'd like to see what uh, some of you have to say about that. It's kind of just a fun little thing. But uh, with that being said, let's let's move on to, to why we're here. Uh, we're here to talk about 3000 Series Network. This is a new version of our fourth generation uh, 3000 Series. Uh, something that's pretty neat about this system is that there's a lot of options that, that, that you can have with it. So as you can see, we have removable capsules. Um, we have <clears throat> also um, a new transmitter and a new connector. And uh, But what we're highlighting with 3000 series is that there's two different versions. We have one version that is a non-network version that's still available. And we have a network version now. And the thing that you'd want to know about the network version is that it has a network connection, but it also does not have an unbalanced connection. So connecting this to a guitar amp, uh, you'd, you'd need a, an XLR to um, unbalanced connection. You need a transformer uh, to have a proper connection. We do have that available from, from AT. Uh, but what you'd want to know about this too is that this is not a digital audio connection. This is a data connection. And the data connection is specifically for use with our new wireless manager software. And that will allow you to scan all of the receivers. So scan your local environment, uh, do some frequency coordination. It's pretty cool software. You're, you're gonna, we're going to go a little bit more in depth later uh, in this webinar here. But again, that is a, it's a network connection. It is not a digital audio connection. Going into a little bit more about 3000 series uh, is that... Uh, as the 600 megahertz transition was happening, we really wanted to have a solution that was going to address 600 megahertz. Because as television stations were moving out of 600 megahertz, that subsequently meant, you know, well, they had to go somewhere. And um, a lot of them went to either went offline or they went to 500 uh, megahertz, even some into the upper 400 megahertz. So our solution for that in the latest generation was to have 260 megahertz back-to-back -back bandwidths so there's plenty of bandwidth to play with to get the channel counts that that you know that are going to accommodate most of the wireless operation um, in the in the country. So uh, how I generally say this is is that um, if you're in the middle of Alaska and there's no competing frequencies period and you have a really good noise floor uh, for your wireless system, you can get 40 channels online per bandwidth for a total of of 80. Um, because you, again, you have a 260 megahertz back-to-back -back for 120 megahertz to play with. Now we know that that's not most environments. Um, most environment, you know, I'd say generally in the United States, you know, you should be able to get 15, uh, 15 to 20 anywhere. But again, we're going to be talking about that, um, going a little bit uh, deeper in uh, into that in this presentation. Something you should know about this is that from a uh, whether you're pushing frequencies from wireless manager or uh, you have a non-network version and you have a uh, what you input the data into the transmitter you scan from the I'm sorry you scan from the receiver 
we have IRSync now. And IRSync is not new to the industry, a little newer for Audio Technica now, where you really only have one data point, one data entry point, and that's either the receiver or wireless manager. From there, you can use this IR sync. You hold up the transmitter to this IR sync window right here. You hold up and let the, the windows uh, you know, look at each other uh, for IR, and it'll push the data from the receiver to the transmitter. Um, so a yeah, bit of a time saver. One of the silly thing I like to say is I played a lot of Nintendo games growing up, and uh, I used to get video game thumbs. And uh, when you have to, to program a receiver, and you have to open up the transmitter and program that too, it's not fun. You can get video game thumbs doing that too. Uh, so that, that'll save a little, bit of, a little bit of pain overall. Another nice thing about 3000 series is we have two different views on the receiver. We have a standard view, a main screen, and we also have a performance view. It's pretty cool about the performance view is that it gives you a little bit more telemetry. It, uh, it'll tell you what operating power you're, you're operating at, just like the main screen. Uh, but it also, it'll give both antennas and it'll also give the audio level from your transmitter and your receiver. So if you're overloading your transmitter, if you don't have good gain structure, it's going to tell you right here. And, uh, you know, I definitely, you know, most cases don't recommend maxing out or, you know, putting your transmitter at plus 12 dB. But, uh, you know, this was just for the example. Another thing to kind of point out here is if you could see on the uh, your AB, those are your, that, that's your antenna view. Um, this line right here, if you could see that it's right next to minus 92, it's in between minus 92 and minus 86, that's a minimum RF hold. You can use this to troubleshoot your system. So let's say uh, you know you uh, you have even a non-network version, and you want to do a, a walkout test, and you have everything set up for for a theater. And you, what you could do is you can grab your transmitter, walk, turn it on, walk to the usage area. If, if it's for theater, it'll be the stage, and you could find out if you have any potential for dropout. If you see that this bar, you come back and you see that this bar got really low. Well, that might tell you that, uh, that you, maybe you need to reposition the antennas. Maybe you should have remote antennas. Uh, but this is kind of a nice little diagnostic to, to find out whether you need to make any changes. As I did mention, we do have a uh, removable capsules with our handheld transmitters now. Uh, what's nice about this is that we're using the same three pin standard as, as some of the other guys like Shure and Sony and Line 6. Uh, so even as it relates to the 600 megahertz rebate program, uh, when you do trade in, uh, when you do send in your, your system, we would need the, just that transmitter portion. We wouldn't need the capsule. So if you really like the sound of your 58 or if you want to have a little bit more variety, um, you can keep that uh, 58 capsule. So kind of a you know, really cool thing from, from AT there. And uh, the thing you should know, too, is that we do have uh, some other capsules available. We have you know, greater performance capsules in our Artist Elite line. and um, but of course, you know, we'd, we'd like to have you here, you know, an Audio Technica capsule that, you know, we'd, we love when people ABR capsules against uh, the other guys, um, you know, also gives you just another flavor, right? So um, one of the things, if you're familiar with previous generations of uh, 3000 series, is that we were using a four pin HRS Hiroshi connector. Well, we've changed that connector and we've gone to a screw down mini Hiroshi type connector that we call the CH connector. Uh, part of the benefit in switching connectors is that this is a much stronger connector. Um, it's a screw down, it's a keyed connector, so you can't strip it out. I've tried <laughs> and uh, I was not successful in doing that, but it also makes it seem a lot more secure. The connection is not, you know, um, is not, it doesn't appear to be loose at all. It, it's not a latching, it's a screw down. So it's a nice connector. It also allowed us, if I didn't say so already, if I'm rambling, uh, it allowed us to make the body pack transmitter a little smaller. Uh, so that's you know another nice thing about this connector. Now I wanted to kind of throw this in there for the next slide, which is we do have some new microphones uh, available too in our popular BP890X line. Um, so we have the BP-892, that's an omnidirectional microphone, and now we have detachable cables for our BP line. Um, we also have the BP-893, uh, that's been redesigned, so that instead of the boom going over the ear, it goes underneath the ear, it's a little bit more of a uh, consistent form factor, and that one's also omni. And then you have the BP-894, that is our uh, cardioid, uh, we call that the, the hammerhead 
cool what's cool about this one is that you can wear it on either ear and the capsule rotates um, there's the white indicator there to show you which side that that microphone is is on um, they're available in beige or black and uh, again we do terminate these for for us for sure for sennheiser um, we have an unterminated version so that you can mate it with another uh, connector, but we know what we're going to ask is that you, you give us a call um, so that way we can make certain that you're wiring up properly to get an unterminated version of that mic. But going back to that transmitter, let's say that you did have an existing Audio Technica mic, you really wanted to use it. I tell people is that we do have a dongle available. <laughs> uh, it's the ATCWCH that stands for it's going, going from a CW connector which is the, the former Hiroshi connector to the new CH. And what I tell anybody to do, if you want a little bit more strain relief, is that you can flip the clip upside down. It's very easy to do. Um, next is, this is probably the, the main talking point for uh, 3000, or one of the main talking points for 3000 series, at least the transmitters, is that we have a multifunction button. And of the things you can do with this would be, it can be a mute, and you can disable this toggle mute. Actually, well, I, I thought I had a slide for this. Maybe it was uh, hidden for some reason. But let's let's talk about that. So on the body pack, we do have a toggle mute right here. And we have a point of reference to show which position that toggle mute is in. Um, you can disable that toggle mute. Excuse me. We also have an LED. It's a status indicator. It'll tell you the green means that the microphone is on. Red would be that it, uh, that it's off. That can also be disabled. But then again, yes, the, the multifunction button. Uh, of the things you could do with that, you can uh, mute. You can have it be RF off, or you can program an alternate frequency. Talking about the mutes, so the handheld, you can do uh, a long press or you can program it as a long press or a short press. Um, let's say that you wanted that mute to be more intentional. Um, you can make it so that the uh, end, well, the end user can hold in that uh, talk or talk, no, hold in the mute button, and uh, for a couple seconds, and then it'll mute. Or you can make it a short press if you want it to be, uh, if you want that mute to be a little bit easier. You can make it be a push to talk or a push to mute. Um, and a push to talk application that could be something like for a restaurant. Uh, so, um, say you know, if, if I take my family out to eat and it's you know, Pelletier party of five, um, and you know, they can hold down that button uh, and push to talk, they will come through and then they let it go and they're gonna be muted. And the push to mute, that could be uh, almost like a, a cough mute where, uh, you know, if a pastor is speaking or, you know, a teacher is, uh, is, is instructing, if they need to talk, they can hold down the mute button, it'll temporarily mute them and then as they let go, they'll come back on. RF off would be, uh, could be very useful for theater applications. Whenever you get two transmitters very close to each other, they create their own harmonics and system wireless systems across the board don't like harmonics. Uh, usually we, that term is intermodulation distortion, uh, very, very uh, vaguely you could say. Uh, they don't like that. So uh, having transmitters close together, if you wanted to put them in RF off for a theater application where you have a lot of transmitters that could be very close together, uh, before they're being used, you can use it for that. And then the alternate frequency again, because there's so many frequencies you can select between. And I like to think that from, I've been an operator for a long time and uh, you know, I've ran sound at, at my area churches for the last 15 years. And I never liked getting the evil eye from, from a pastor. Maybe I didn't do my job right, or maybe uh, somebody brought in a wireless system uh, that I didn't know about and that uh, wireless system was causing interference. It's happened before. Now, if I told the, the, the pastor, hey, look, if you start taking RF hits, you push in this button for a couple seconds and it'll switch to a backup frequency, pretty cool. We also have some charging bays available. And uh, one of these top models here, so you have the CHG3AD, that's a bay with a power supply. And we also have a bay that's networked that has a power supply. Now you can link up to five of these bays together and you'd have really just one of these top models and then you would buy extensions. So let's say you wanted to monitor um, these devices on the network. Well, you'd buy one CHG3N AD uh, because that's that's the network version. So one of these and then four extensions and the extension comes with a joining plate and it also comes with a cable and that cable can pass power or data. Um, right. So some, some things about uh, uh, battery use. 
what I like to say is that, you know, we use AA batteries. We typically recommend that you use a nickel metal hydride that's 1900 milliamp hours or greater. If you use that, you're going to get nine and a half hours or better out of your wireless system. But in, you know, everybody's on a budget and, and you know, we like to think about going green. So what I tell anybody is that if you do get a charging bay for your system, it's going to pay, for, you know, and I'm basing this off of, off of a church use, it's going to pay for itself within a year and a half. I would say even probably less than that because for the church I ran sound for, our protocol was after every use, you have to take out the batteries. So if we had two services and we only used it for four hours, we had to take out the batteries. So half those batteries were still good. Um, so I think it'll be less than that. For a higher education, you know, you're going to be using that a lot more often. So you, the system's going to pay for itself within six months. So that's kind of a cool thing about um, going with charging bays. Another thing, too, is that if you um, say you are using rechargeable batteries and somebody forgets to charge those batteries, pop in a couple AA alkalines and you're going to be good to go. You don't have to worry about a, uh, a proprietary battery. All right, so let's move to Wireless Manager. Again, wireless managers are new software. It's our it's our soup to nuts software. You can use it for planning. You can use it during um, during an installation. It's very end user friendly. It feels a lot like a browser. There's tabs. Um, so let's uh, let let's go over to that. I'm going to see if I can do that here. And you still might see my uh, <laughs> you might see my risk and mitigation screen here. If not, it's all right. So wireless manager starting. Hopefully you all see that. Jim, let me know if you don't. All right, so once that loads, uh, what you're going to see here is it's going to uh, show, it's going to populate your unsynced devices. Now, I have one CHG3 here, that's, so that, that's my charging. Um, I also have a DE2 system here, which is uh, 470 to 530. And then I also have an EE1 system, which is uh, 530 to 590. Something I probably should have mentioned is that the is how we came up with our bandwidth naming scheme. So you have every 100 megahertz got a letter. And in, um, uh, sorry, quick, quick distraction. Let me see, oh, ah, let's go back to that. Let's try this, try this again. Um, every 100 megahertz got a, a letter. So you have 100 is A, 200 is B, 300 C, 400 D, 500 E. The first letter is where it starts, second letter is where it ends. So it starts in DE2, starts in D400, ends in E500. Then you have uh, EE1, that starts in E500, ends in E500. So it's kind of you know nice rhyme and reason. But going back to Wireless Manager, um, so I brought in my devices. Now if I wanted to, to coordinate for other devices, let's say that I wanted to bring in some Sennheiser systems, let's say I wanted to, or a Sure system, uh, we can bring that in. Let's bring in a ULXD, and I'll do that in G15. I'll do one channel of that. So you can coordinate for, if you have some other systems, you, you can't coordinate for the other guys too. And I'm going to close this out here. Next thing I can do, again, we're in the device tab. I'm going to add some tags, and uh, this is where things are going to get kind of fun. So I'm going to plug my favorite band here, uh, Meshuga, and uh, I'm going to say that um, this is for sugar so I'm going to add that tag I'm also going to add vocals and uh, let's say that the we'll make that purple Add that and let's say guitars add and then let's say um, bass and oh no I didn't change the color on this other one so let's let's change the color on that let's make that green how about that Okay, I'm going to close out, and now I can start populating some tags here. So I've named my body pack here, and I've also named, you know, what you can name here. This is my handheld, and it's using a C510. Now I'm going to tag this as vocals. I'm going to tag this as uh, bass, and I'm going to tag this as guitar. All right, but since this is also for Meshuga, I'm also going to to throw that in there as well. So we're adding some multiple tags. All right, now that we're done with this and I have what I like, uh, let's go over to frequency coordination. Now from here, I'm going to bring in uh, the systems that I'm going to scan or that I'm going to scan for. So I'm gonna scan for all of these, add them in, 
close it out. Now from here, if I wanted to, I can add in uh, some television stations. Now for the market that I'm operating in, uh, we're in Ohio, uh, we're in Cleveland. So I'm gonna pull in uh, what we know about uh, the Cleveland area. So I'm gonna pull in Ohio and then uh, Cleveland. Now I know for this particular location, what the FCC database says, um, that 14 uh, could be a problem. I'm pretty certain that that's not a problem where we're at. I do think that 17 is a problem, but let's say there's something that you know I missed. Like I didn't, you know, I missed something here. I'm going to apply this, close it. We're going to be able to take care of that with the frequency scan. Now, if you're not familiar with exclusions, that's basically what we just did. We're excluding some frequencies, but we can exclude more if we want. Um, so an exclusion would be, I don't want any of these wireless systems to live in this particular area. Now, inclusions, what those would be good for if you're not familiar, let's say you had some IEM systems and you wanted those IEMs to live in you know, upper 600 megahertz and you wanted your wireless microphones, or not upper 600 megahertz, upper 500 megahertz. Um, and uh, let's say you wanted your wireless microphones to live in uh, right, you know, let's say 500 to 530, you can have your systems mostly live there. But from here, what I want to do is an, is an RF scan. Now, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here before I do my scan. And then I'm going to select the receivers that I'm going to scan. Now, because I have network versions, this is going to look for the Network 3000 series um, systems. Now, since our 5000 series it can be networked as well, you can pull that in. I don't have one connected currently. Uh, but I'm going to select these two. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the scan. And then what this is going to do is pull these receivers offline, and it's going to uh, look at the RF environment that these, uh, that the whatever the receiver sees. As this is populating, though, what you should know too is that I only have two of these connected. But if I had more connected, then it's going to scan a lot faster. So it seems like it's scanning a little bit slow right now. But again, that's only because it's using two systems. Um, Right, and here, maybe something I could say about this too is that one of the telltale signs if you're looking at uh, digital TV stations is that you see this um, uh, the spike right here, this transient, that's usually uh, what you know as a, um, this is going to be, this whole thing is a digital TV station. This right here might be another wireless microphone that they're testing out in service. You know, same thing with here, maybe even here as well. Uh, this, not exactly certain what this is, but, you know, we're just looking at and seeing, hey, you know, where's where's my noise floor at? Now, what I'm going to do, too, now that the scan is complete, let's say I really wanted to get conservative as to what frequencies can, can work. I'll take this down to minus 90, and then I'm going to apply it. I'm going to close out here because now we're done. Now, if you wanted to, I'm going to go back to that um, RF scan here. You can bring in... Uh, you can import a scan from a frequency analyzer. If you, know, if you already have a scan, you could pull that in. And I'm going to close this out. Um, yes, I want to close without any changes, but you, as you can see here, it has created some additional exclusion groups and it's saying, hey, we don't, we're not going to operate anything over here, right? Over here on the right-hand side, side, you do have some views. So if you think that this is looking a little bit too cluttered, uh, you can... Uh, turn off some of the views here. Now from here what I could do is I can do a frequency plan for all of my systems. I'm going to click calculate. It'll take a little bit and then it's going to populate some frequencies that I can use. Once that's done, I can click apply and then I can push that data to my uh, to my receivers. And this is what I have come up with, right? This is what it has for me right here. I'm going to click apply, close. Oh, I don't want to save the results. Really don't need to in this uh, particular um, for this webinar. But yes, so now we're pretty much done with the frequency coordination tab. Now let's go over to monitor. Under monitor, I have my user defined um, or my online devices. And I know that I have three online devices right now. Let's go over to user defined. And under here is, is the alert section. This can tell me, you know, really what's going on. And the alert section is syslog compatible. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up an image. Let's see if it takes me to, hopefully it takes me to the right folder here. Since I said I was doing this for uh, my favorite band, Meshuggah, we're going to bring in that image. 
right? As that populates, whoa, that's pretty big. So let's stretch that image right there. And um, let's say for kicks and giggles, let's say that this was for a festival and they were playing a Friday, gate, uh, a Friday date, I-D-A-Y, and uh, let's bring in a Saturday date here too. All right, so basically what this is gonna do is give me some scenes. I'm gonna close out right here. And now I have Friday and I have Saturday. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna bring in my Audio-Technica devices. I'm gonna add those in here, close out. Now let's say for, again, for kicks, the body pack transmitter was gonna to go to the bass player for our Friday set. Singer has the handheld. And let's say that for the Friday set, I knew that the chargers were gonna be back here because of maybe some stage orientation. Then the other thing I could do is then go to Saturday. I'm gonna bring in those devices again for this scene. Close out. I'm just gonna close this here too, just to make it uh, uh, nice and compact. And let's say that the, this guitarist gets the body pack this time for some reason, <laughs> and um, the singer still has that mic, and then let's say the chargers go behind this banner for this. So if I switch uh, to Friday, you can see this is what this scene looks like, and that's what this scene looks like as well. So uh, here's another way you can, you can do this. Let's say that this is for a house of worship, and uh, you have a volunteer, and the volunteer doesn't know who anybody is, and they don't, you know, hey, worship leader, and they start using uh, generic terms. Um, you can use this to um, to put in, you know, the person's name, and then that'll make it a little bit easier. You know, maybe you have a Sunday service, a Saturday service, a Wednesday service. Uh, that'll uh, show a volunteer, hey, look, this is this is what everybody's name is. You can feel a little bit more comfortable with where the wireless microphones are operating. Right. Uh, from here, if you wanted to, you can create, I'm going to go back to frequency coordination. You can create a channel list report um, and uh, that can, you can be saved as a, you know, this, these are the frequencies that we're using for this particular environment. So with that being said, you know, it's 1233. So we're going to move on a little bit further. So again, this is, you know, free, this is free from Audio Technica. You can go on our website and down wireless manager for free and, uh, and play around with it. Talk a little bit more about 3000 series. Really what anybody wants to know is that if they get their, you know, any wireless system, let alone in during the 600 megahertz transition, again, which is a couple days away, but um, or from being, you could say complete, um, people want to make certain that if they're going to switch wireless systems, that they're going to be able to maintain their channel counts. That's the most important thing, right? The next thing is obviously re reliable signal. You know, you want your system to be reliable, right? So. Let's talk about something that we did in the applications engineers uh, in uh, New York City um, almost a couple years ago. So we, we went to, to New York City, down to our midtown Manhattan. We were within a half a mile of three major broadcasts. We wanted to see how many we can get online. At the time, we were only able to pull together uh, you know, 24 systems, but we came up with the frequency plan for 32 and checked all 32. And uh, you know, as it goes, you know, we we left all of uh, the the receivers on, and uh, war game the transmitters. Um, we turned on all the transmitters, turned them off one at a time to make certain that no intermod was coming through, and uh, we were good. So we were able to get uh, 32, you could say 32 systems, in uh, the middle of New York City, in the in Midtown Manhattan. That was pretty impressive uh, for for all of us involved in this. And uh, you know, furthermore, we wanted to make certain that you know uh, we want to test signal reliability. So on low power, 10 milliwatt, um, you see me there. Uh, I walked the block, got a couple dropouts. Uh, on high power, uh, which is 30 milliwatt, we got no dropout. So considering that I'm on floor level and these wireless systems without a distribution are on, um, you know, nine floors up. Uh, again, pretty pretty impressive stuff uh, for for us. Here's another thing to show here too. So this is a scan of Sao Paulo, Brazil. And here we were able to get 12 systems online to full range. We were able to get a lot more than that. I think that we had 24 systems that, that we were able to get online to, to limited range. Uh, but with this, you know, 12 systems. So that's where I, I typically will tell anybody, it's really 12 channels anywhere. Because if we could do 12 channels in this environment, we could do 12 channels anywhere. Now to some of the costs related to this. 
So uh, the entry level cost for this, uh, this is um, list map pricing, uh, $729 for the, for the network version. Now the thing you'd want to know about the network version, uh, if you're installing this your, yourself or if this is you know an integrator, is that this does come with a joining plate, and uh, the joining plate will allow you to put the two receivers side by side in the same rack space. So two receivers in one rack space. And as you can see here, we have a lot of we have a variety of options with a um, with some of the BP microphones, uh, be it black or beige, and with a lavalier uh, version. Now, what I like to think about too is is for a uh, you know a ten channel system is is the the nationwide average. For a ten channel system, you know you're looking at around uh, eighty one hundred dollars um, map cost. That's usually about three thousand dollars less. Um, for a system that is as feature packed as this. So if you are an end user and uh, you know you have uh, you know uh, again we're all on a budget especially today you know it, it's you know stimulus money we're, we're still all on a budget and uh, what can you do with that three thousand dollars with that extra three thousand dollars did you maybe need a new uh, console uh, maybe you were three thousand short maybe you needed another projector this can really this is as feature packed as it is it, this can really help uh, with a variety of budgets and because of everything that it can do it, it's also good for a variety of applications so a lot of places we install 3000 series are with schools with churches corporate AV uh, we're doing a lot of these jobs and to kind of throw in a quick success story from from Audio Technica this is a pretty recent one for us is that we have a 400 ton channel deployment now granted this is for a distributed system this is not all in one location uh, but uh, some uh, some of these schools in this district have uh, 24 channels. Some of them are, are using 10. Um, but again, because of its price point and because it's so feature rich, this is something that um, can fit into a lot of budgets and again can meet a lot of applications. So with uh, with that being said, I think we we have just a couple minutes left. And uh, Jim, I don't know if you want to to take over from here. Uh, absolutely, I pop back on here. I did, Dan. I, I I think you got the chat from me, but I want to give away some swag to whoever comes closest to that uh, guess of number of is it number of channels or number of microphones for the curling event? Uh, number of ch simultaneous channels. Number of simultaneous channels used. So I have a uh, just a few people have answered that. Go ahead, anybody else, and type in as a question, send it to me, what you feel that number is. And while I ask these questions uh, at the end, then I'll, I'll, I'll choose the winner, whoever gets closest. All right. And, and then I'll, I'll offline, I'll barter some swag from you. Dan. <laughs> All right. I'll we, throw we in some full, full compass stuff as well. So uh, I do want to give a shout out to, uh, give me a second here. It's L. Alberto, uh, coming to us from Colombia. That's All right. He, he's tuned in from Colombia. He says, "I'm a big fan and user of AT products." So, welcome, Alberto. It's good to good to have you on. Thank um, you. Yeah. So, I have several questions regarding the wireless manager. Uh, okay. You, you had you had brought in some other manufacturers in there, and the, mm -hmm. the couple of questions that I have here. Uh, one says wireless manager works with AT and other different brands at the same time, question mark. And then the other one says, can you scan using the Sure mics, for example, or will it only scan the AT units? It, this is no different than the uh, than the other guys in that regard, where it's only going to pull our equipment. Um, so although you can frequency coordinate for uh, for ours or uh, some of our competitors, it's really only looking at uh, an, an Audio Technica wireless system like a 3000 series or a 5000, and then you can push that data from uh, Wireless Manager to our systems only. But it's still important to be able to coordinate. I mean, really, no matter what software you're using, it's still obviously very important for you to be able to coordinate for uh, for ours and for uh, for our competitors too. It's kind of some of stress on that. <laughs> So, uh, kind of an all-encompassing generic question: Why would why would somebody why would you encourage somebody to use the network version regular uh, as opposed to the regular three thousand wireless? So, uh, for the regular version, although you can use Wireless Manager, Wireless Manager is not going to be able to connect to it. So, uh, a network version, what, what you're getting with that for you know you could say the the nominal price, uh, you're you're being uh, 
you're able to monitor what's going on with the receivers and you're able to push data from wireless manager to those receivers. You know, if you do a, a frequency plan, it's a lot easier to, to push deploy uh, from from wireless manager than it is to go into receiver and then program each one. And uh, I think for everybody, time is money. And uh, to, uh, to be able to uh, push everything from wireless manager, I think is a pretty huge advantage in going with, uh, with the network version. I love the, by the way, the Sao Paulo uh, example. It, it's kind of like if it plays in Peoria, it'll play anywhere, right? It's, it's, if you can get right. 24 channels there, you can get 24 channels anywhere. Along right. that lines, uh, I do have a question here. Um, this this came in from, oh, let me find this question here. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. The, the, oh, okay, it's from James. Uh, what time of the day was the New York City test done? Ooh, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> uh, it was in, when did we do it? It was in the afternoon. Uh, I believe it was at, by the time we had everything all set up, and and ready to go. We did some tests in, in the morning and in the afternoon, but I want to say the bulk of it was in the afternoon. I know where I know where, I know where they're going with that question. Yeah, bro, uh, broadcast power can change. Um, that that would be that'd be one thing uh, that 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 could be a consideration. Now the the other thing too is that you know we being on the the ninth floor of a building, I would expect the noise floor to also be higher. Period. Um, now if you're in you know you're in, on a lower floor. Uh, you could have the advantage of some signal attenuation from a building that, that could also um, uh, play into it. Uh, the other thing, too, is that let's say that this were for a Broadway show. Uh, in a lot of ways, and I'm going to say this is a pretty as a blanket statement for most manufacturers. Usually, if, if you're pretty far away, not even that, not even that far away, um, there's usually a lot of signal attenuation between material um even on ground level uh so the potential for getting uh a lot of frequencies of really you know a lot of other wireless systems but let's talk about specifically you know 3000 series it's still pretty darn good now we as applications engineers too you know we we provide a lot of custom frequency plans um and uh you know that that'd be something to the uh, the degree of you know you reach out to your full compass uh sales engineer and uh, they can reach out to us and we can provide a plan that puts us really all on the same page or you could reach out to me directly and uh, i can create a customized plan for you as, as well uh, that you can deploy even using 3000 uh, series network uh I, okay so i think i know the answer to this question but dan i'm going to pose it to you since you are the presenter and more of an expert in this system than i am for sure uh can you hear or monitor what is on each channel via the computer with with the software you cannot um and that's because that that uh, that network connection is not passing any digital audio um so the really the only way you'd be able to monitor it in, in that regard would be a uh through a mixer um or you know putting everything through another amplifier um so you had a headphone amplifier that was multi-in. That'd be another way to do it. To kind of throw a shout out to, to our uh, 5000 series, there's a headphone connection on that. So you would be able to monitor directly off of a 5000 series receiver. But everything obviously will be in some sort, well, in live situation, like with your, your band, Mashuga, is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> that, you'd, be, it, you'd be doing a solo. <laughs> yeah. You, you would monitor it from the board, obviously, but you can yeah, see you can the signals, the correct? You can see the state of the wireless system. Uh, right. The system. Yeah, so you could see what, what you know, what RF is, is going on, uh, even from the, uh, you know, from monitoring the, the transmitter. That, that, that'd be one place. Now, again, to, to, to say that again, too, so that there's no, no confusion with this. If you do decide to scan, if you were to do that mid-show, it's going to take your receivers offline. And you're going to lose your audio for a significant, you know, for a show. That's a pretty egregious thing. You know, a dropout's pretty egregious, and you probably don't want to do it during that time. But if you are experiencing issues, if you program to backup frequency, you can always have the end user switch. And again, end users typically know when they're experiencing a problem. Um, 
and let alone at, at, at the price point that, that it's available at, uh, still a nice feature to be able to, to switch frequencies if you need to. It's, anecdotally, I was at an event about a year ago. I was looking at, um, I was with my family with, um, it was a Birds of Prey exhibit at a, uh, at a local park. And this person was using a non-AT system and their interference was driving me up a wall. It was just driving me nuts. And I thought to myself, if they had a 3000 series, I can just push in the button, go to another frequency, we'd be good to go. Oh, done, um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely an advantage there, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, what was another question we had here? The uh, So, obviously, what was the date again for the FCC, July? July 13th, so it's just a couple days away. And at that point, you're supposed to cease operation of 600 megahertz use. So if you do have some 600 megahertz product, you're really supposed to stop using them on that date. Um, so the so, wireless manager, Dan, how yeah. how often do, does that update with the FCC database? That'll update every time the program itself is is updated. Now the the program is um, uh, it will update automatically. It'll show you a prompt. It'll say new version available. Would you like to download it? That's one way to do it. Um, or you can, you know, look at the website and, and download it. You know, from there you can download the executable from there. Uh, but it is it is looking to update. And whenever it does update, it's going to update its its uh, database relative to what the FCC has. Throwing this out there too is that thankfully nowadays things with the FCC are getting way more stable. Now they weren't during the transition period because people really didn't know where things were, uh, how everything was going to shake out, and when they were going to shake out. Well, we we know we have a we have a pretty good idea as to to when. But the the advantage of using a 3000 series with Wireless Manager is that when you're scanning on site, it tells you what you can get on that site then and there. Um, so it's going to take into account if the transition has already happened for your area. I like to do a pretty comprehensive plan. Usually what I do when somebody reaches out to me is that they say, hey, look, I know that T-Mobile's behind or the FCC is behind in my area. I'd like to know how many I can get both before and after and if I'm going to need to be able to, if I'm going to need to do a switch. We can do that for you too. To take, what you need to take into consideration with that is, let's say a television station hasn't moved yet and let's say for any system, let's say you can get 10 in one bandwidth and 13 in another that could switch and that could switch with any manufacturer. So we'll give a plan. We can provide you with a, a plan that will address both pre and post, but it's really only as good as what's going on in your environment. So using a 3000 series will allow you to scan locally and, uh, and effectively. That's a super valuable tool to be able to physically see that exactly what's going on, where the noise floor is, what's happening in the hole. Right. It, and it looks cool too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, otherwise you're shooting blind and trying to figure mm -hmm. it out until you find one. So uh, question question from Don, I think this may be our last one, uh, okay. unless another one pops up. Does the backup frequency change both transmitter and receiver at the same time? Yes. So how it, it uh, when you hold down the button, when you hold down the multifunction button, let's say for, again, just to give the real, real world example, Let's say that my system was uh, on 470.1 or .950, and I programmed my other backup frequency, you know, like I scanned my environment and I found out that 520.125 was also open. So my primary frequency could be that 470.950, backup 520.125. We'll hold down the button and about the amount of time it takes to get a sip of coffee, you hold on that button, it'll the the transmitter will tell the receiver, hey, we got to change. Um, and then it'll switch frequencies within about that amount of time. But it, yes, at that point, it switches both the transmitter and the receiver. Excellent. All right. I think it's about time that we, uh, I think that's all the questions we have. About time we get to, I do want to make one point, though, um, that I've noticed coming from all of our contractors, integrators, customers that we have, and customers that use an integrator to install systems that having a network version is very, very valuable. When they, uh, when the contractor is allowed to to log in via VPN and see what's going on to help you troubleshoot systems if there's anything happening. 
I could so throw this that, out there too for for contractors. There is something called a walkout test that you can do, and with the walkout test, um, it'll um, it'll show you your diversity and it can show you by antenna. And although I said you could do that with a non-network version right from the screen, the the version from uh, from Wireless Manager is way more comprehensive. You could use that for system commissioning. So you could say, uh, you know, you and the end user, the dealer and the end user could be in agreement to say, hey, look, we did a walkout test with this, with these systems. We found out in the area that you're going to be using this in, there's, there's, uh, the potential for dropout is extremely low. Here is the report. And then everybody can be on the same page. So that's another nice tool that you can have using Wireless Manager. I, I really encourage you, you all to go download it, to play with it, and, uh, um, and to check it out. I mean, it's free. What's better than free? All right, so everybody's waiting with uh, <laughs> bated breath here. What is the answer to the curling question? How many, How many simultaneous channels? Simultaneous channels. 54. 54, 54 channels of we, Audio Technica Wireless simultaneously. Let's see. Let me look through the answers. We had 25 as an answer, 319, 150, 39. Now again, this is just this is not anywhere else. I'm saying just for the um, maybe, you know for the curling event, only for the curling event. Correct. So to so, think about the curling event having 54 channels of wireless, that's it that, looks that's like a lot for curling. Well, <laughs> I like so, curling, but yeah. So it was how many? How many again? One more time. 54. 54. It looks like the cur the closest one that we have. We'll do the closest no matter what, even if it goes closest over. The closest one that we have is 42 channels uh, on, on that guess. So 42, well that goes to DJ Kendall. So uh, DJ, if you've left your or your email address um, when you logged in, I will have that. I will contact you and and I'll barter some swag from Dan possibly. And and then uh, we'll contact you, get your address, and we'll, we'll send that out to you for sure. Um, other than that, Dan, thank you so much. That's that's pretty much all that we have uh, for today, uh, I believe. We, we we no longer have any more questions here. So any any last parting words that you'd like to uh, give to us here, Dan? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I thought I thought me. I'm like, any I'm last parting words you have? For any us. parting words from me? Uh, <laughs> well, everybody, be safe. Um, you know, kind of crazy times. And, uh, you know, we obviously hope, I wish the same for my family that I wish for yours that, you know, everybody stays safe and that everybody's healthy and, uh, that we can all you know, get through these, uh, crazy, crazy times. Yeah. With that, uh, thank you everybody. Uh, again, my name is Jim Rip. I can be reached if you have any further questions at J R I P P at full com, And, uh, it's been a pleasure, Dan. Thank you so much. A uh, lot of lot of uh, information here on this system. It's a great system. I, I've tried it out. Dan has done some training with us. It's it's excellent. So, again, thanks everybody for attending. We'll see you on the next episode. Mm -hmm.